I'm not a fan of the Gyarado compared to the Hurricane, for sure. I think the Murcielago is much cooler. I mean, yeah. Dude, the LP? 670, I think it was? Yeah. Oh, We're saying. also talking about it. A Hurricane secondhand is like 140 versus the Murcielago is like, still like 220. Yeah, Mercy sick of shit. It's like huh? twice the price, obviously. Mm -hmm. And then an LP is going to be like three, 400. That's good. Cause it's cooler than the Gallardo. Resale value, bro. Gallardo's you want to throw away your money? Buy a Lambo. <laughs> I mean, okay. Yeah. <laughs> if you want your investment to depreciate like 30% in value the second you roll off a lot, <laughs> buy a new Lambo. Well, or you gotta wait, you know, 30 years. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, what's up guys? Today we are doing maintenance on not a Lambo. It's a Infinity G37 LP. Nothing, nothing, no, 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 nothing. No, no, it's an LP4. It's all-wheel drive. <laughs> LP4. Or is it SB-4? <laughs> G37X <laughs> LP4. <laughs> yeah, so this is the uh, G37 sedan that we have for the channel. If you guys are new to the channel, welcome to the channel. Uh, it is my lady's car. God, every time you do that. Yeah, I know. I do it, I do it to annoy you. It's really cringy. So, um... We have a walk around video, but to give you some basics, it's got some kind of like ground effects, basically Easy Lip Pro up front, Ventus Auto Works sides, some random $11 rear spats, a two by two carbon rear duck bill that I had painted Malbec black along with the rest of the car, chrome delete on the belt line, Swift Springs, MGB brake covers because it's an automatic and I don't care about upgrading to Akabonos for $1,300, $1,400. Not a race car. Not a race car. And um Vordovin I forget the form nines I think they are basically work emotion CR lies CR Kai's that um I got for five hundred dollars for the set because I drive on the crappiest roads in California so I That's do not true. give a crap about running Volks on this car if I had smooth roads I would get Volks for sure there was you remember that set I told you oh yeah you sent me the link to it what were, what were they I don't remember offhand. Uh, they were freaking ZE40s uh, for 2400 bucks in, in the perfect spec for this car. Oh my gosh, it would have been perfect. Anyways, we're gonna do some spark plugs today. Step one, remove the engine cover. Step two, throw a hammer at the car. Can you have like sparkle effect when they just yeah. like it'll look at it and they'll just fade out sparkle effect? Oh, you want me to do a transition with like a fancy, like yeah, sexy cool. sparkle effect? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So that way, like the engine cover just disappears. Sure. Yeah. Great. Boom. See? So if you hit the engine cover a certain way, it literally just dissolves. Yeah. Um, no, but seriously, there's uh, there's four bolts. One, two, five. three, five. Five. Including this little center dude right here. Oh, yeah. yeah. Five. Five. Um, so you've got two nuts and three bolts. Yep. Um, we are back here for the second time because we just did this map sensor, which may not have been the right freaking map sensor because multiples. There's multiple map sensors and yeah. You want to go ahead and show them where the other one is, just because the yeah. second one, the second one's right here. So we have a check engine light on right now for a map sensor. It's this one. We have a check engine light on for a map sensor and also brake ABS module voltage, which doesn't feel like it'd be related but i've also read on the forums that there's um people have gotten that code from um low air battery. in their lines yeah and they've got it from low battery and yeah there's a bunch of little things so it's possible that a map sensor can throw a code for a brake abs module um and not enough to throw the abs light yeah which is what we have ordered so we're yeah. gonna do that a little later today once yes that indeed in. so but you're here um to gain access to your spark plugs they are actually down kind of in this little quadrant and down on the other side you need to pull this resonator box. This tube basically comes with it. Uh, and then we are going to undo the throttle bodies. At the same time, we're gonna clean these throttle bodies because it hasn't been done. Yep. Um, something to note before you get started in this, in case you're jumping the gun a little, do not unplug your throttle bodies. Just undo the bolts and 
kind of tilt them out of the way. Uh, this works for cleaning. Don't unplug them. If you unplug them, the car will have to relearn the throttles and it's not something you want to deal with if you don't have to when you can just leave them plugged in, move them, clean them, access your spark plugs, put them back. Yep. So don't unplug them. Yep. So. Okay. Let's get into this. Let's get into this. All right, so now farther along in our spark plug swap process, we have removed the intake arms. Tubes. 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 What are motorcycles made out of? Tubes. Tubes. <laughs> Two uh, <laughs> eight mil hose clamp bolts right here. You got a 10 mil that goes right here. Only on the passenger side. Um, wiggle off the hose from here. Basically pull, pull, pull. And then for the pass or driver's side, it's uh, the two eight mils that hold the throttle body and the intake to the hose or the tube or the tube. elbow or the arm or the, whatever you want to call it. Stuff. To the stuff. You've got this clamp right here and then it's a wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Get it so out. now we are down to our throttle bodies which need to come out of the way. Yes. Uh, we are doing a separate video on a throttle body cleaning, but uh, essentially do not unplug your throttle bodies. No. Keep them plugged in. You got your five mil Allen. One, two, three, four. You're gonna take those out, slip this forward. And just so you guys can see, you can see here's the first coil pack and here's why you have to pull these. The second coil pack is directly underneath the throttle body. And the third one, same thing. You gotta pull the throttle body so you can see it, but it's right down there. So we're gonna pull these out of the way, clean them while we're at it, pull these three coil packs, and then we have access to the spark plugs. Yes, indeed. All right, spark plug update. We are also in the process of doing a throttle body cleaning. So you can see we have uh, cleaned our throttle bodies. And put new gaskets and in. And put new gaskets in. But the reason you have to pull these is because you can see, so coil pack one, still a little bit of a nightmare down here, uh, but two, three, very access, easy on very the simple. Passenger side, yes. driver's side, coil but pack one is- Even easier. Even, even easier. Yeah, because uh, number one, You've got a little thing going on in the rear coil pack on the driver's side. But, but uh, these coil packs are held in with a 10 mil each. You have one, two, three. Um, we'll do 12 all day. Hmm? 12 bolts all day. Six. One per coil pack. Oh, I one thought I was looking at two. That's right. Six bolts all day. All right. Yeah, six. All good. So we're going to pull the 10s out. Um, sometimes these clips can be a little bit of a pain. I know when I was doing the 350Z spark plugs, um, it was a bit of a nightmare to get at them. So just so you have it in mind, when you pull the coil pack up after the bolts removed, you can kind of twist it a little bit to gain yourself some leverage in different directions because they're not, they're kind of oblong shape basically. Mm. Um, so you can gain some space that way. Also, sometimes rotating them will help you have better access to the clips to pull them off the wiring. So, uh, you know, take the tens out first, get them up so you can kind of see where you need to situate the clips and then you can have a much easier time getting stuff out. Yep. Okay. All right, all right, all right. Let's get into it. Okay, so we have unbolted the coil packs. It's just a really easy squeeze on the side. And then uh, what you wanna do is obviously, as Indy said earlier, you pull the um, coil pack up so you can get some leverage. You can give that harness a good squeeze, and pull rotate, it out. Rotate wherever you need Yeah, to rotate access. however you need to do to get access. This side was pretty straightforward. You just pull a wire out of the way. On the other side of, was that cylinder six? One two, th one, two, three, four, five, six, cylinder six. This side was a little tricky here. You just got to pull this little hard line out of the way. Yeah, it's this just a clamp. Yeah, actually, fun fact, this is actually not a hard line. This is a rubber line. Oh, that's just a hard rubber line. Yeah, basically. It, it just, it, it gets shitty over time. Yeah, so uh, something we've discovered as we've done this, 164,200 miles on this car. We have oil on our coil packs for cylinder two and cylinder three. We checked the spark plug, tube. spark plug tube itself, and there's no oil actually on cylinder two, but there is a little bit of residue Just a hair. It's not on cylinder three. So pull this out of the way for you. Okay. Let's see if we can get in there. It's a little dark, but there's a little there's a little residue, uh, oil residue in cylinder three. So uh, valve cover, <laughs> valve covers eventually. Uh, OEM valve covers are like 300 bucks a pop. Yeah, 300 a piece. So we now know that we're gonna have to do this at some point. Yep. According to Indy, we're looking at um, at the rate at which oil is leaking from these two spark plug which isn't a lot. seals. It's not a lot. Clearly, this is the first time we're seeing them and there's barely any residue. Yep. So I think we can um, 
I think we've earned at least 10 to 15 K. I if, think so. If not 20. Yeah, and you don't drive this a lot, so it's not, we're looking at like two years, honestly, before yeah. you really have to like get in there. Yeah. Um, but like I said, if you drive your car a lot and you start to see that, you're gonna wanna take care of it. Um, you put like 7,000 on this a year, if that. Yeah. So like, we can kind of let it slide for a little bit. Yep. Um, and uh, just so you guys are aware, an indicator of if your tube seals might be going, um is a possible misfire yeah eventually these tubes will fill up with oil uh, it doesn't have anywhere to drain to so eventually they'll fill up with oil and as it just kind of gets deeper and deeper and deeper um you'll start to have misfire problems and stuff like that yes um so just keep that in mind um also when you go to pull your your coil packs if you hear a really large squelch sound as you pull them out you'll you'll kind of know yeah you'll you'll definitely know <laughs> i've had that happen so so this is the amount of residue that we have on cylinder two and this is the amount on cylinder three really not a lot so um we'll be good for a little while yeah so let's continue with the spark plugs yep okay so we pulled a spark plug out with our fancy schmancy snap-on spark plug tool it was expensive but it's, i mean how sick is it though you're the one pulling them out it's it's actually like the easiest spark plug removal i've ever done <laughs> it's dumb and it costs a lot of money but dude it's sick okay so here we have the first plug we pulled out pull this off and here's our new it is the exact same uh, fxe 24 hr 11 as this one uh you can see the difference though one's yeah. disgusting and old and one's not so uh, i'm gonna show you on this old one here real quick so the gap for this particular car is 0.43 uh, this is just a little O'Reilly's spark plug gauge. There's fancier ones out there, but whatever. So you can see, you're gonna set it in there and just kind of rotate it until you get to where you need to be. Now, if it's a little tight, uh, you can use the tool to kind of a little pry pry, a little open it up. Uh, if it's a little too open, um, there's a multitude of ways people have done this. I usually just take the plug and tap it down until it starts to, you know, decrease the distance. Some people do it on a toolbox, but you can see just doing that has decreased the distance to, you know, point, you know, three something instead of the four three it's supposed to be. Right. And then like I said, if you need to open this up, you'll just literally slide it, give it a little pull, a little pull, and just keep kind of going until it opens up where you need it to be. Back at four three. Yep. So that's how you do that. Um, these were pretty much, these new ones were all pretty much in spec. Um, I don't really had to mess with like two of them, but uh, we're just gonna keep that safe for now. But yeah, that's how you gap these things. Um, this is like a dollar. <laughs> Make sure that your plugs are gapped so that you can gap foos in your 370Z. <laughs> you know that video? No, I don't. I haven't seen that one. And the, <laughs> the island boys and the island boys and the Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I know the song. I don't know the, yeah, yeah, yeah no. But this is gap like a dollar. Gap your spark plugs so you can gap. Um, for, for the record, if they're gapped too wide, you might not get proper combustion because it's trying to arc too far for what the compression is at the car. Right. Uh, if it's gapped too little, same but the reverse. Okay. So these are our old spark plugs in cylinder order. One, two, three, four, five, six. We have um, leaks from the spark plug seals on one. Uh, one and three. One and three are the worst as far as showing on the spark plug is concerned. There's residue from the seal you can see on three and two a little bit. Um, and there's a, just a little, little bit on five. But um, like, stuff. yeah, like we said before, this car's got 164,000 miles. So we're gonna uh, plan to get some valve covers. I would also note that these plugs have 164,000 miles. Yeah, I've definitely pushed this so, quite a bit. Yeah. So these, these plugs are- That's two. But it is what it is. Yeah. Um, all things considered, for $164,000 on those plugs, they're in pretty good shape, man. Yeah. So. Yeah, this car this car has been relatively well taken care of, all things considered. Yeah. Um, we ha also have kept our coil packs in the correct cylinder order, just so that we can take notes. You don't have to necessarily yeah. keep them in the same order, but I personally prefer. Honestly, prefer I'm, to do it. I'm the same way. Like I don't, I know I don't have to keep them in order. It doesn't really matter, but also I don't care. I keep them in order because. Yeah. If you're gonna start isolating problems that you do have, if you know this has been in this same position, it starts to become a lot bit easier to yeah. you know, pick out problems in the future. Exactly. So we can also kind of keep track on it if we're ever in the area again, for some random reason. Like valve covers? Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> so uh, now we're gonna put the new spark plugs in. 
we're gonna show you how to do this this is a little bit of an unnecessary step uh to some people i do it because i like to so i'm gonna set these guys right here and we're gonna take our first one so first thing first we have this nice big thing of anti-seize and i'm gonna do this can you actually grab the uh right behind you the red one Dialectic grease. Yeah, so, um, so we're going to take some of this anti seize just a little bit. I'm going to get it right on the threads there. Okay. And then we're going to take our dielectric grease that doesn't have the cap anymore. And we're going to put it on the actual ceramic section here. Now, while it will allow electricity can, to conduct through, that's why it's dielectric grease. You don't want to get it on the actual lead here. A little bit around the edge, uh, once you put the coil pack back on this, it'll create a seal that kind of keeps weather and water and oil, oil from- Oil, most specifically. Most, most specifically <laughs> oil, from getting onto this and creating problems. So a little bit of dielectric grease just on the ceramic, a little bit of anti-seize just on the threads. And you can tell it's not a lot. You really don't need a ton here because as you twist it in, it'll start to spread through the threads. Right. So. Let's go ahead and get these in. Yes, indeed. All right, so we have threaded in the new spark plugs. We are now tightening them down. Tightening them down. And since uh, Indy is a human torque wrench. Torque. What do you think you're doing, about 15 foot pounds? 50 weight. What is it? What are you, 40 weight? <laughs> 50 weight? <laughs> 40 weight sounds nice. That is cousin <laughs> in the snakeskin pants. Bet a couple of SR20s will pull a premium one week before Race Wars. <laughs> I don't know. I know Spark Plug Torque. I could look it up for you. But Kiss my shoes? <laughs> <laughs> if anybody, I am not Ted. <laughs> You're a smart fence, Ted. <laughs> All right, so about 15 foot pounds, yeah? Uh, about till they're tight. Don't over tighten. Yeah, do not over tighten these because then you'll just ruin the crush washers. And if you do have an oil leak. Actually, it's worse than you'll ruin the crush washers. What you'll end up doing because the um, the bodies are steel usually and the threads on the uh, head are aluminum. You'll just pull the threads out of the head. Oh, no. Yeah, you don't want to do that. And then you will not be able to get your spark plug out. You'll have to helicoil it, uh, which I've done. I, But to be fair, I've never done it on a car I was working on. I did it while I was in school. Oh, okay. And so that, was the, that was the point of the class was to intentionally break stuff and then helicoil it. Uh, so I've never done it on an actual car. <sighs> well, you haven't done it on a car because you've done it in school. That's what school's for, ladies and gentlemen. You know what the funny part is, is the class was kind of weird. They're like, here's this 10 mil, drill a hole and tap it and then break it. And you have to drill it out. I'm like, you just twist it out by hand, it's a 10 mil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know, it was a weird one. Okay, so uh, 15 foot pounds, we're gonna tighten these down and then basically make sure that these coil, paps are, coil packs are wiped down and uh, seated properly. Coil paps. Coil paps. Coil paps. And, uh, Harness is plugged in. Go, 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 go. Okay, so. Sorry, what else? Track my TikTok. We got it all back together as the dogs scream and cry. No, they're cheering for us. They're cheering. The, they're like, woohoo! Yeah, I do 37! So, um, <laughs> it's, you just gotta reverse your steps. You pop the new coil packs in, bolts and clips, just get them just barely tight. <laughs> wow. And then that's, that's my dog, dude. Um, throttle body bolts, just barely tight, basically. Um, intake elbows, pop those in, get the resonator clips back on, tighten your hose clamps down, make sure that your um, resonator is bolted down here, engine cover back on, and it's done. Give it a little start. We already started it, by the way. Sounds cherry. And it ran. It sounds great. like a new car. Well, it didn't even need to like do the stupid like struggle star and yeah no it was, idle poorly it was it just was like great. no we good dude yeah it was really nice so, so we're gonna keep an eye on uh, the mileage and do a valve cover video at some point probably like next year or something yeah it's not super pertinent this um, second. yeah but uh otherwise it was very straightforward to be honest uh which is you, you've done the uh the 350 350 spark plugs right they're a pain so compared to the vq35 the vq37 is actually very easy to well, do well uh because i don't know about the 370 because the engine bay on the 350 was tighter um, True that. in particular areas. So the 370 I think engine, bay the engine bay might be the chassis as opposed to the motor. Yeah, or like at least the, the yeah. extra stuff. We got a it. lot of space up here. Yeah, surprisingly. So, so yeah. Um, 
Overall, it was pretty straightforward though. Um, runs right. So yeah. if you guys have any questions or anything about the install, let us know in the comments down below, anything like that. Um, we use the same code of spark plugs, the Denso Iridiums um, as OEM. Yeah, so uh, We got them from Z1. Yep, yeah, got them from Z1. Um, order your parts from Z1 if you have a Z or a G. They have good stuff. Yeah, they have yeah. the best. Um, in my opinion, and they have yeah. loyalty rewards. So if you spend a lot of money, you get you get cool oh, stuff. Yeah, me. Yeah. Well, no, because like my first order for this thing was yeah. like six k. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it was like six grand. So yeah, yeah there you go. Like, yeah. But uh, let us know what you guys <laughs> thought of the video in the comments down below. And if you liked the video, please make sure to like, subscribe, ring the notification bell, and we'll see you in the next one. We appreciate you guys. That dirty ass engine.